Hey, how's it going, do you surfers? Today as a follow-up to my previous video where I showed you how you can restore old hazy yellowy headlights on this 2005 Audi. I am also going to show you how you can restore and rejuvenate badly worn out and damaged clear coat. Now at first glance, and especially on camera, this hood or the clear coat on this hood might just look a little dirty. Now that's somewhat true, as this has been sitting outside for a while, but once you get the dust and the dirt off, you can see the clear coat itself is also somewhat damaged. Here, you might be able to see it better close up. All right, so you guessed that the first step is to thoroughly wash down this hood. So grab yourself a clean bucket of water, then add your favorite car wash soap, and next we're gonna wash down our hood. Now keep in mind if you use a regular sponge, there's a chance you might put tiny little scratches or swirl marks on your hood. So if you have any, you can use a microfiber towel or a microfiber sponge. Or actually what I'm going to use is going to be this extendable wash mop with this microfiber head at the end of it. And as always, if you're interested in this or any other tools or products you see me use in this video, I'll put links to where you can buy them for cheap down below in the description box. So don't be afraid to click on them and check them out. Alrighty, let's get to it. Goes without saying, you want to be super thorough. You don't want to leave any large pieces of dirt or dust or debris left on this hood because otherwise that could potentially ruin our entire job when you're about to start polishing. When I almost forgot, just like any detailing job, you're going to need a lot of elbow grease for this. So again, make sure you get you some. Alrighty, next we'll grab ourselves a water hose and thoroughly wash down our panel. Next you want to dry it off, or again use a microfiber towel to wipe it down. Now let's take a look at our hood. But if you look closer, right by where this shop light is, as you move around, you can see how badly this clear coat is worn out and how dull it actually is. So the next step in rejuvenating and fixing the clear coat on this hood is to use some clay bar to remove more contaminants that have etched themselves into the clear coat. So basically when we washed our panel, we removed the dirt and dust and debris that were laying on top of our clear coat. But there are other contaminants that over time have etched themselves into your clear coat and are not going to be removed by simply washing down a panel. And that's where these clay bars come in. As you can hopefully see, these are really sticky. And when you go over your panels with these, you're basically pulling these contaminants out and removing them. Now, of course, you don't always need to use a clay bar. You only use it when you're working on a severe case or a worn out clear coat, which we have here. Uh, one way to tell whether you need to use clay bar is to simply run your hand against the clear coat on your panel and it should feel very, very smooth. If it's not smooth at all, then you should use a clay bar before you go on to the next step. Well, and of course, sometimes you can hear it as well. All right, now before I start clay barring this panel, I'm actually gonna get some tape and split this panel right down the middle. This way, when we're all done, we have something to compare our new looking polished panel to. All right, so next we'll grab our clay bar and knead it with our fingers flat. And you can of course use the palm of your hands as well. The idea is to simply flatten it out. So next you'll grab the detailing spray that hopefully came with your clay bar kit and spray it onto one section of your panel. And also some on the clay bar itself. It's a very good idea to split down your panels into sections, that way you can keep track of which areas you've gone over and which areas you have not. So on this side of this hood, I'm gonna split it down into four sections, going this way once and this way once. And next, simply, you wanna start going to town and you wanna make sure you also apply enough pressure so that you increase the chances of getting any uh, debris that has lodged itself into your clear coat out of your clear coat with this clay bar. Ew, look at that. That was stuck in our clear coat. And the way you know that you're done clay barring a certain section is again by sound. See, this area on this side, I'm pretty sure I'm done, but this area I haven't touched yet. See if you can hear the difference. Yep, a lot smoother on this end. All right, and every so often you wanna fold back your clay bar and knead it down with your fingers or the palms of your hands again. This way you get a new clean section to work with. So after washing and then wiping down our repair area, here's what we have. Not much of a visual difference as you can probably see, but the paint on this panel now feels as smooth as a baby's butt and that's what you want. And next, using a dual action polisher, 
we're going to start compounding. And what I mean by that is simply we're going to be using a cutting compound which is made for deep scratches and blemishes with a cutting foam pad with this polisher to go over this panel. Now you can also use a wool pad as your cutting pad but as I've said in my previous videos these are a bit more aggressive and they cut faster. Now I have here is a forced rotation dual action polisher which basically means that this not only rotates but it's directly driven by the motor the rotation of this but that it also oscillates up and down as it's rotating. Now since this oscillates up and down as it's rotating it is a bit safer especially for beginners but of course you don't have to use a dual action polisher you can just use a regular, regular rotary polisher just make sure you move a little bit faster if you have thin clear coat like we got here. Now if you do decide to use a rotary polisher I do suggest that you mask up all around the edges and maybe on the body lines if you have any sharp body lines on your hood for example because with a rotary polisher and a wool pad if you decide to go that route you can easily burn through clear coat around the edges. And again you want to split down your panel into sections so we're going to make uh, four sections out of this panel this way and we're going to start off at this section right here. And the way we want to move is to first go this way move down 50%, go back out this way, 50% this way, then back up, over 50% down, and we're going to keep doing this until our compound is clear or getting very thin. Now before we go any further, we need to clean off the remnants from the detailing spray that came with our clay bar. So go ahead and get you some grease and wax remover and completely wipe down the area. And the way we're going to be doing this is to first apply compound to four areas on our pad. We're going to spread our compound around so that it doesn't splatter all over ourselves. And then we're going to set our polisher to the slowest setting, turn it on and start spreading this around. And next after you spread it around you want to go to a higher setting and start polishing. Now this paint is actually in really terrible shape now that I look at it very closely. It has a lot of obvious chips that have gone through the base coat and clear coat that we are not going to be able to do anything about. Plus it has deeper scratches here and there that we would need to wet sand before we start polishing. But uh, for the sake of this video I'm not going to bother with wet sanding right now. We're just going to stick to compounding and then polishing. Which is still going to make a huge improvement the way this clear coat is going to look. However, I'm going to switch over to a wool pad so that we can cut more and get rid of more scratches. So once again, we apply some compound. Now after spreading it out on the lower setting on this polisher, I'm actually going on to a bit higher setting before we were going on a medium setting uh, in the first pass. Now we're just going to go a little faster. Hopefully that will help us get rid of the scratches. So here's a closer look after our second pass. So as you look at the shop light in the reflection, as we move down, I'm sure you can see how it improves as we move to the area where we have polished. Oh yeah, don't forget to spur your wool pad. Now if you're not happy with the results you get in one section after you do three passes, go ahead and simply do more passes. It's not unheard of to do four or even five passes to be done with a section. Alrighty, so here's a look at our repair area after compounding. As you can see, it is a lot better. Now you guys are probably not going to be able to tell on camera, but if you were to look closely in some areas, this paintwork looks a little dull. Or in other words, the black does not seem to shine as deep as it should. And that's because when we use this cutting compound and this wool pad, 
We were able to take out some of the deeper scratches and blemishes, but we put tiny scratches and swirl marks of our own into this clear coat. So in order to remove those, we'll move on to our polishing pad and polishing compound. And once more, do three passes in each section. And again, if you're interested in these, links in the description. Now before we start polishing, we need to remove all the leftover cutting compound that might be still on this hood. So once again, get yourself some grease and wax remover and completely wipe down the area. And we're gonna be applying our polishing compound more or less in the same manner, but you can use a bit more force and also set it to a higher speed setting since there's a less of a chance that you'll cut through your uh, clear coat with this softer polishing compound and uh, foam pad. So again, first we're gonna spread it around on the low speed setting. Now we'll go higher. And we're gonna move slower as well. And we're gonna wipe it down with a clean microfiber towel and take a closer look. All right, in this shot, I think you guys can see the difference now. This is the area where we just polished. And as we move up, see right here, we move to the area where we've only used our cutting compound and wool pad. And right here, you can probably see this border line. See below it, the gloss looks much deeper. And above it, it's not as deep because again, we have very tiny scratches there from our uh, wool pad and cutting compound. Again, the number of passes you need to make in each section is going to vary based on the condition of the finish on your vehicle. Now I think for what we have here, we can get away with two, maybe three passes in each section. So again, cue opera music. Alrighty folks, we are pretty much all done. As you can see, now we have a nice deep gloss all over this side of the hood. But before I take off this masking tape and show you the before and after, let me actually take this car outside, that way you guys can see it a lot better. So here we go, moment of truth. Now that was not as dramatic as I would have liked. All right, this will be telling. Try to look at the reflection of this tree on the side where we have not yet compounded and polished. And here's a look at the reflection on the side that we have polished. Here's before and here's after. Difference is night and day, as you can hopefully see. So there you have it, folks. We were able to do a lot with just compounding and polishing. Now there's even more you can do to rejuvenate old uh, clear coat. For example, we could have wet sanded this clear coat and then uh, compounded, then polished, and then after that used the uh, soil remover. And then after that used some wax to really bring out the shine. But you know, it all depends on what you wanted to do and what's the final product you want to have. Now, if you want to learn how to do those things, plus more, I suggest you watch these videos of which I'll put links to on this side of the screen. There will also be links down below in the description box as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.